Micro-batching is a technique where incoming tasks to be executed are grouped into small batches to achieve some of the performance advantage of batch processing, but without increasing the latency for each task completion too much. Micro-batching is typically applied in systems where the amount of incoming tasks is variable. The system will grab whatever incoming tasks have been received within the last period of time and execute them in a batch. This process is re executed repeatedly. The reason we batch up is that we want to eliminate or decrease some of the overhead associated with processing each task. Uh, for instance, imagine a client that has to send a task to a server and for each task to be executed the client has to send it over uh, to the server and then wait for the server to finally executed. Sending a task to a server has an overhead associated with it. First the task has to be sent to the server, this takes some time, then the server has to process the task and then the server has to send a response back. Um, if the client instead sent 10 requests to the server at the same time, then the overhead of sending those 10 messages over to the server at at the same time will be a lot less than sending one at a time over to the server and waiting for a response before sending the next. The problem with batching tasks this way or requests is that the client has to wait until it has 10 requests it can send over the network and this waiting time can be quite long because you don't know how long time it will take before you have 10 requests. What you do instead is that you simply send whatever requests you have for instance every 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds and if that is one two three four or whatever then those requests are sent as a single micro batch the time interval that your system waits while um, collecting tasks to put into a micro batch is called the batch cycle the duration of the batch cycle influences the latency um, of processing tasks in your system. So if you wait, if your system waits 50 milliseconds and collect whatever tasks into a micro batch that it has received within 50 milliseconds, then latency will be at least 50 milliseconds, the time it takes to collect a full micro batch. But if your system waits one second, then latency of processing a batch will be at least one second because you wait one second before you have a full batch. Obviously we want latency to be as low as possible so we want the batch cycle to be as short as possible. To keep the batch cycle as short as possible you can just keep looking for tasks and execute whatever number of tasks you have received in a micro batch. If that is one task, then you execute that task and then you see how many tasks have been queued up since you started executing the first task. If that is two tasks, then you grab those two tasks, execute them as a micro batch or in a micro batch, and then you look again. And that way the system will execute the tasks as fast as they come in or uh, as they are received by the system. But as traffic or um, pressure grows on the system, the micro batches will tend to grow in size and because the batch grows in size then more ba uh, more tasks are received while executing the batch and then the batches grow and grow and grow in size until such time that the batch size kind of fits with the incoming um, traffic. In that way the system adapts the batch cycle and the batch size to the load on the system. Micro-batching is useful in several different uh, scenarios and I will cover some of them here. First of all, if you need to write uh, data to disk, then it's always faster to write bigger chunks of data to disk than it is to write smaller chunks of data. And by that I mean you can get a higher throughput, a, a higher total amount of data written to disk if you write in bigger chunks than in smaller chunks. Because of that, it makes sense to batch up um, the chunks of data you need to write to the disk and write them in bigger batches in bigger chunks to the disk at the same time. 
Another scenario is inter-thread communication, where threads communicate by sending messages to each other via queues. It is typically faster to send multiple messages into a queue than it is to send one message at a time. So this is another case where micro-batching is useful. In the same way, it is typically faster to grab a batch of messages from a queue than it is to grab the messages one at a time from the queue. Another scenario in which micro-batching is commonly used is single-threaded servers. The single-threaded server will poll all its incoming connections for messages and whatever messages it finds it will group into a micro-batch and process it. The last scenario is the traversal of large data structures in memory. Instead of traversing the data structure one time for each um, query you have to the data structure, you can batch up four, five, six or whatever queries and traverse the data structure with all queries at the same time. That means that each query gets access to each row in the data structure or node in the data structure if it's a tree one by one as you iterate through the data structure. This saves you the time it normally takes to load the data structure into the cache memory of the CPU five, six times because this way you only load it into memory one time and then you let each query access whatever you loaded into the cache. So this is faster. And that is all I have to say about micro-batching for now. Study the technique, read my tutorial on the topic as well, and look into your systems and see which of them could benefit from micro-batching. But remember, you only need to resort to micro-batching if your system is challenged on performance. Otherwise, you're just introducing unneeded um, complexity into your application. However, once you get used to micro-batching, Building it in from the beginning is pretty simple and once you are used to it, you will build all your systems with micro, uh, with micro batching built in from the beginning.